To rear me was the task of power divine, supremest wisdom, and primeval love. Before me things create were none, save things eternal, and eternal I endure. All hope abandon ye who enter here. Hello and welcome everyone to another episode. Today we'll be exploring the mythology behind one of the more interesting characters in gaming, Dorman, the final antagonist of the game Shadow of the Colossus, a god and devil who tricks the player into releasing them after slaying the 16 colossi. This being is one of the more mysterious villains, as much of the world and its inner workings are more shown than told. But let's start our deep dive into the mind and inspiration of Dorman in Mythology and Gaming. For a bit of context, Shadow of the Colossus, if you haven't played it yet, begins with a long cinematic and we're introduced to our main character, Wander. We learn that Wander has traveled a long way to revive his love, Mono, by taking her to the Shrine of Worship in the Forbidden Lands, in hopes of gaining favor with the deity that's residing there. We hear their voices speak on the price to pay for such an act and what Wander will need to do. This is something that I'll touch on a little later in the video. But we learn that Wander needs to find and defeat the 16 Colossi holding the deity in place. Because, of of course, that doesn't sound ominous at all, but after each time Wander defeats a Colossus, he is impaled by dark tendrils and transported back to the shrine. After the 16 are defeated, spoiler alert by the way, Wander gets possessed by the deity Dorman, who attacks the shaman Lord Iman and his guard. One of the first pieces we can see in Dorman's trickery and the connection to mythology is the entrance into the actual shrine of worship, much like Dante's entrance into the gates of the underworld with the shade of the Roman poet Virgil at his side, so too does Wander enter the realm of the forbidden and the lost. After his entrance into the shrine, he comes to the tall room with a winding and descending path to the bottom, where awaiting Wander is a small but foreboding pool of water. This is akin to the nine circles of hell, as Dante and Virgil ascend further and further into the depths of the underworld, the realm of the dead and the lost. At the bottom of hell sat Lucifer, unmoving, frozen, in a lake, living out the rest of his days, a traitor to the Christian god. The connection to Dante's story Inferno continues with Virgil exclaiming, Behold this, and behold the place, where thou with fortitude must arm thyself. This reference to Dis is meant as both a calling of Lucifer, but as well Hades, or Pluto, the rulers of the underworld. The name Dis itself is close to Dorman, as both deal in treachery, trickery, and death, as well are held in a forbidden land. However, in name alone, there is actually another connection. In the book of Genesis of the Christian Bible, the king Nimrod ruled over the land of Shinar, one of the southern regions of Mesopotamia, and had constructed the Tower of Babel. This myth tells that the Judeo-Christian god Yahweh saw the work of Nimrod and his people in constructing this massive tower and punished their rebellious nature by confusing everyone into speaking different languages, creating the multiplicity of languages of the world. The name Nimrod surprisingly is the backward spelling of Dorman as well. Well, furthering this, we can look at, or rather, hear the languages and voices speaking in the game's opening moments. The language spoken in the game is made up of a combination of Japanese and Latin, as many of the words and phrases used fit the phonology of both. Moreover, Dorman shows this by speaking in this manner and having multiple voices, one masculine and the other feminine. This combination of voices fits with many theologies, as many of the gods are androgynous or genderless. One god who fits with the voices and genders is the trickster god of Norse mythology, Loki. We may now consider Loki as a more masculine figure, thanks to both Marvel and the God of War series, but within the Norse myths he exhibits multiple voices and is for the most part androgynous. Loki himself is a shapeshifter, who has had multiple children like Jormungandr and Vali with the goddesses Angerboda and Sigyn but was also the mother to Odin's horse Sleipnir, 
Many of the children of Loki are at least somewhat referential with the creation of the Colossi, as all 16 are derived from Dorman and connected to him. A final connection with Loki is their physical appearance. Loki, being a Jotun, or in modern terms, a giant, is very similar to Dorman's appearance as he menacingly towers over Lord Emon and other guards near the end of the game. Continuing on Dorman's appearance, this god exhibits characteristics that once again align with the depiction of the fallen angel Lucifer. At the beginning of the game, when we're first introduced to Dorman, he speaks with a masculine and feminine voice that allies itself with the idea that angels themselves are androgynous, or considered to be without gender. In Dorman's first conversation, we see that the light pours in from the shrine's ceiling. Within the Bible, the term morning star is often associated with a light bearer of God. This has been typically associated with the devil, Lucifer, as his name means light bearer. Lucifer and his demons, both in pop culture and within the Bible, discuss the use of manipulation and possession. Dorman is masterful in his deceit and manipulation of Wander, using his desire to save Mono, curating his own freedom through it. Once the final Colossus is slain, Wander is once again transported back to the shrine, finding the shaman, Lord Emon, and his guard there. Realizing all that our protagonist has done, Lord Emon yells that Wander is possessed by the dead, and showcases paler skin and demonic horns typical of demons within the Judeo-Christian mythos. Once Dorman has fully taken over Wander's body, they display characteristics comparable to modern depictions of Christianity's Satan. Hooved feet, an ominous and intimidating voice, large pointed horns, and most notably, broken wings. It's these that sell the idea of Dorman being connected to Lucifer in the Christian mythos. As one of the most beautiful and closest angels in Yahweh's choir, Lucifer rebelled against God and fell from heaven having his wings torn and burned as a result, leaving nothing but the charred skeletal shadows where wings used to be. Much like the wing structures we see on the back of Dorman, as well, when the player takes control at the end of the game, we can actually attack Lord Emon and his guard with an attack of breathing hellfire, cementing his depiction with the Lord of Hell. Finally, something interesting I'd like to point out is how strongly Shadow of the Colossus plays with the idea of light and dark. Returning to the opening scene of the game, we see Dorman speaking to Wander through the light in the ceiling. However, much of the room is cloaked in darkness, and shades from Dorman move to attack Wander as he reaches the shrine. As well, Dorman's figure displays bright blue eyes against his dark, shadowy frame. This contrast between light and dark shares the idea of the Chinese philosophy of the yin and yang, two contrasting yet complementing forces, where yang depicts day, authority, and masculinity, yin depicts night, chaos, and femininity. The argument can be made that both share the known and the unknown of the world. As Dorman's eyes are clear and open, his body is shadowed, uncertain, and chaotic. Dorman's name can once again depict this philosophy as Dorman can be derived from the Latin word dormio, meaning I sleep, where one goes from the known world into the unknown lands of the mind. Ultimately, Dorman depicts a collection of different yet similar connections to myths from around the world, be it tales of gods, myths of fallen angels, or even Eastern philosophies. All of these create a compelling and complex villain within Shadow of the Colossus, inspiring questions and ideas into what might be in the background and history within the game. With that said though, that's going to be all for today folks. If you enjoy these by the way, make sure to like the video and subscribe so you can stay up to date on new videos when they come out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.